Hello guys, so welcome back to another uh, video. In this video, we're gonna start, you know, uh, delving into assembly language. And we're gonna see, you know, uh, more and more about this language in the incoming videos as well. So let's start here. So to know assembly language, we must know first what kind of registers we have in our processors, X, basically x86. So, uh, using assembly language usually come with using memory as well as registers. We introduced the concept of registers uh, last video, and here we are uh, taking uh, it in, into more details. So there are 32 register in x86 processor, and here are all of them, okay? The good thing about x86, it's Intel, one of the Intel's processors. So whenever they introduce a new processor, they just use the same old ones and extend uh, or add new ones. So uh, the, the list of registers here are basically used not just by x8, x86, but also with newer versions of that processor, like for example, Bendium. So we have first, you know, eight bit registers. We have eight of them. So uh, you see guys, it's there, there are shaded areas, which is eight bits and there are white areas. So let's concentrate here on, you know, these four in specific. So these are eight registers. Each one is eight bits. So this one, for example, it's called AL. It's very small. This one is called BL, CL, DL. This one is called AH, BH, CH, DH. L and H here means low and high, like uh, A low, A high, B low, B high, C low, C high, uh, and D low, D high. Okay. We have also 16 bit registers. So if we extend, we can use these two registers like like for example al and h together as one register this register will be called ax so ax is basically two registers combined together bx same concept it gathers bh and bl together cx dx we have also those guys here you know called uh, uh bb SI, DI, SP, and we, all, we have also the flags registers, the instruction point registers, or IB. We have also those guys here, okay? We come to know all of these as we go forward in our course. We have also 32-bit registers and 64, even 64-bit registers. So the 32-bit registers is basically uh, an example of them is EAX. So, uh, this is a low, this is a high. These together is called a X. If we take these together, the white and the gray, this is called E A X, which is 32 bits. And same for B. So this area here, all these bits together is one register called B uh, or E B X and so on. Okay. If you extend further, this will be RAX, 64 bits. And same for BX, RBX, and, and RCX, and RDX. We're going to highlight some of them, but as I said, as we go deeper in the course, we're going to learn more about all these registers. So the first group, we can say it's, uh, it's called general purpose registers. Which is which is shown here, okay? Like RAX, uh, FBX, RCX, RDX, RBB, RSI, RDI. The last one, this guy here, doesn't belong to them. And we have also those guys R8, R9, R10, until R R15. These are called general purpose registers. Again, as we go into the course, we're gonna know more about them. But just to highlight, uh, for example, AX. It's called accumulator register. Usually it's used as an accumulator. Like if you have a number like five, you put this five in this register and you start to accumulate or increment this 
register. So usually we, for such operation, we use AX. Uh, the destination register and the source index registers, these are used for some stream applications as we will see in the course later. Uh, CX is used, for example, for shift and rotations. And again, as we go further, we're gonna take these into details with more, with more details. Like if there is general purpose registers, there are of course special purpose registers like those guys here, the red guys. You have RSB, uh, the flag register, the rib register, or IB, and you have the segment registers here. Okay, again, as we go to deeper into the course, we're gonna highlight this in more details, especially in this lecture, we're gonna learn more about the flag register at the end of the lecture. Not this lecture, but you know, in another video. The instruction pointer, we introduced it before. The instruction pointer, we introduced it, it's basically a register that has a number or a pointer to the next instruction that the processor should execute. The stack pointer here, and the stack is very important, it's a part of the memory. So if, if for example, this is the memory, part of it is called a stack. And we deal with the stack in a different way than the memory, as we'll see uh, you know, in the future. Now we can you know, introduce you guys to assembly language, okay? So basically the CPU or the processor, it's an electrical machine, electronic machine. It understands only you know, zeros and ones, electricity, no electricity, charge, no charge. So it's binary, zeros and ones. So in early versions of computers, we, we, we use zeros and ones directly to program a computer or a processor. And we call this machine language. And there were really, you know, programs written with machine language, zeros and ones. Like for example, if you wanna add, you know, uh, you, you will not try to add to the, no, you're gonna avoid, for example, zero, zero, one, 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 zero, one, something like this. So the computer will interpret this code as an addition. You wanna do some addition. Then later, you know, engineers introduce the assembly language. So the assembly language convert basically these binary codes into what's called mnemonics. Mnemonics, I'm silent here, okay? So, it's an English at the end, and it's very easy to remember. And each mnemonic uh, option, it will be followed by, uh, by two operands. Like for example, add CX, AX, something like this. This is one operand, the second operand here. Okay, add this guy to this guy. Add the value in AX register to the value in CX register. But this is optional because you can directly add something like five to CX. So this is just one operand here. And of course, since again, the machine, the CPU doesn't understand English, we need what's called assembler, which is just a program that takes this assembly code and convert it to, you know, zeros and ones again. Let's start by one simple instruction called move instruction. So this is our first instruction, our first command in our first keyword, call it, call it whatever you like in a simple language. Move, it's move, you know, it moves something from a place to another place. So the general uh, form of the move, move, then you have the destination mentioned first, then comma, then the source mentioned second. For some reason, I they choose this, I don't know. Okay, but anyway, so the source always is the second operand, the, first, the destination is always the first operand. And what, what it does, it copies the source into the destination. Like for example here, move the X, uh, CX means copy what's in CX register to DX register. So for example, if CX has five hexadecimal, then DX will be also five hexadecimal after this operation is executed. Or you can translate it into you know, normal programming language like this, DX equal to CX. Uh, 
Here are more examples. So optionally, as we said, we have two operand, but we can just have one here. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna move 55 hexadecimal into CL. In the second instruction, we're gonna move what's in CL into DL. This is basically DL equal to CL. Then we're gonna move what's in DL, which is 55 into AH. So register AH. Then we're gonna move what's in AH into AL. Then we're gonna move what's in CL, which is 55 again to BH. And finally, we're gonna move what's in BH into CH. So all of them will have the, the value of 55 after executing all these instructions. Can we do that with 16 bit registers? So remember here, all the registers are eight bits. If you go back guys and look at the map here. So this is eight bit, this is AL, this is AH, this is BL, this is BH. This is our eight bit registers. But of course we can also deal with 16 bit registers. So same example or exa very, very similar example. Here we have 16 bits, 468F is 16 bits. We can write it in that way. This is our, these are 16 bit and we're gonna move these 16 bit into CX. CX, which is 16 bit, which is, you know, a group of two registers. So CX is basically CL and C high together. Then we're gonna move what's in CX into CAX, then from X to DX, then from DX to BX, BX to DI, DI to SI, SI to DS, and finally DI to B. All of them again will have this value 468 at the end of these instructions. But there are some rules that we should follow and respect here. Otherwise, we're going to have some bug bugs. First of all, you remember, guys, there is a register called the flag register. I'm going to go back and show, show it to you. So this register here called the flag register, this guy cannot be, you know, used with move. You cannot move some value to, this, to that register. It's illegal. It's a bug. If you do it, it's, it's, it's an error. So you can do that. Move AX to the flag register, FR. Also, data cannot be moved directly to segment register. Let's remind ourselves what is segment register, those guys. So those guys are called segment registers. So you cannot move directly data to these registers. But you can do that indirectly. Like for example, here, this is a, an illegal example that, or show, show you some illegal uh, move, a move of uh, two, three, four, one into DS. DS is a segment register, so you cannot move that. So what you're gonna do here to do it, you move first this value to another register, then you move what's in this register to DS. Other rules, value that is less than 16 bit. If you move a value that is less than 16 bit to a 16 bit register, the rest will be zero. Like for example, if you say move BX and five, BX is 16 bit, five, if we write it in binary, is just like this. It's just four bits. So what's, and, and BX is 16 bits. So what's gonna happen? is that after this operation, BX will have this value. Or five, zero, zero, zero hexadecimal. Also the source and destination registers in move should match in size. So for example, this is wrong. You cannot say move AL and DX because DX is 16 bit and AL is 88 bits only. This will cause an error. This is illegal. Also moving a value that it's too large, okay, into a register which is a smaller in size will cause an error. Like for example here, BL is eight bits. 
This number here is 12 bits. Two is uh, zero, one, zero, zero. F is four ones and seven is one, 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 zero. So this is wrong. This is 12 bits. Uh, this guy is 16 bit, but this number here is more than 16 bit. This is four, this is four, 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 this is 16, but then you have another eight bits. So this is also another, you know, illegal operation or a bug error. The next instruction that we're gonna take is add instruction. It added from the name, it adds two stuff together. Okay, so again, the general, the form of the adding instruction and destination and a source. So again, the source, the destination is, is mentioned the first, then the source is mentioned second. And what you're gonna do here, if we write this in a C, for example, C++ or whatever language, I when I say add destination and source, I'm saying something like this, destination equal to destination plus source. So for example, if source before has one and this guy has one, after this operation, destination will have two. Here is an example. If we're gonna add 25 hexadecimal to 34, if I wanna do this, first we can move 25 to, uh, which is eight bits to an eight bit register like AL. Then we're gonna move 34 to BL. Then we add BL to AL. And this is means basically L equal to L plus BL. And we can do in another way using different registers. So we have, you know, eight, eight bit registers. So for example, we can use DH and CL. <clears throat> That's also fine. So we're gonna move 25 to DH, 34 to CL. Then we're gonna add, uh, you know, DH and CL, which, which means basically DH equal to DH plus CL or 25 hexadecimal plus 34 hexadecimal. Can we use 16 bits? Yes, of course. So these are an examples for using 16 bit registers, like using, you know, uh, AX and DX here. We wanna add these two numbers, 34E hexadecimal, 6A5 hexadecimal. So you put each of them in, in a different register like AX and DX. And finally we add AX and DX together. We can also do like immediate, <clears throat> like move with just one operand, which is called immediate operand. This is called immediate operand, which is basically, you know, uh, just a number. So if we're gonna add again 25 and 34 with just using just one register, we first move 25 to DH, and then add dh and 34. This is basically dh equal to dh plus 34. dh is, is 25, then we have 34, and this will give you uh, the required you know, uh, addition. Thank you very much, guys, and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.